Hey there, welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I have Dan Hardesty. He is an artist that reached out to me. He is a 3D artist, but it, this is a fascinating story. He's a 3D artist, actually didn't start out as a 3D artist, went to school for it, and there's there's like a whole transition into what he, how he became a 3D artist and what he does now. It's So he learned 3D art, and then somehow that turned into a job where he does 3D modeling for theater productions, a production at Sight and Sound Theaters, which is like, I think he said it's like a one a 180 theater, like it goes around the stage and they retell Bible stories, like stories from the Bible and they reenact it and he builds the big sets. Like if you go to the website that they have, giant ships and, and rocks and castles, and he, they have 3D printers and he makes the props out of 3D, 3D printers. Fascinating. That's not what he started out to do. Uh, he, was at, he went to college for something completely different. So we talk about that. I was really happy that he reached out to me. So here is my interview with Dan Hardesty starting right now. Where am I talking to you from right now? Where are you located? I am in York County, Pennsylvania, um, in a little town called Wrightsville. Okay. Uh, now, I'm horrible with geography. Is that East Coast or West Coast? I'm sorry. That's <laughs> south, uh, south Central Pennsylvania. Okay. So, right near the Susquehanna River, um, I'm about two hours west of Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Um, right. Yeah. 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 All right. How long have you been living out there? Oh, we've been here for I don't know, roughly 15 years or so. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we. I grew up moving around a lot, but um, met my wife in college. We've been in Pennsylvania for a while, but met my wife in college in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, which is north of Philly, about an hour, and then have moved around that Philly area. Yeah. And then we had some family here in this area, um, and we're tired of the the whole you know city scene, as mm-hmm. it were, um, and moved out here because it's beautiful here. It's it's uh, you know very wooded, trees, rural. It's, really. It's, Gorgeous, yeah, very nice. Like how wooded? Are we talking like wildlife in your backyard type wooded, or it's just it's definitely just yeah, got we've trees. Had, we've had deer running through our backyard, and um, sometimes when I get up in the morning, I can hear turkeys across the street and okay in the, in the woods and stuff. So I live in like a, a suburban kind of neighborhood. Yeah, but it is kind of plopped in the middle of farm and woods and all that kind of okay. stuff. Okay, yeah, okay. that was I wanted to know: is it like you're in suburban, or you're like log cabins could be out here type, oh, no, type no, no, area? No. <laughs> they're not that bad. No, I love my I love my running water. I love my electricity. I love right. I love the bathroom being in the house. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> when you you said you went to you met in uh, met your wife in college. What did you go to college for? Well, I initially went to college in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, at Cairn University for a, a, a Bible degree, actually. Oh. Um, but and that's where I met her. She had a counseling degree from there. Um, but then afterwards decided that wasn't quite the uh, direction I was going and had always done art, been interested in art. And initially, when I graduated from high school, I thought that's what I was going to do, but it kind of shifted. Um, then I shifted back and then uh, just had the family working a full time job and went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia in the evenings um, for a computer animation degree um, there downtown. So I did, I did, I stretched a, I stretched a two-year degree out into like five years. Yeah, <laughs> no. It, so I do it at night, so. <laughs> and you started out as one. Like when you left high school, you were you said you changed. Like what kind of art were you doing once you were leaving high school? When you first thought like I'm going to be an artist. Yeah, the, I think when I really got serious um, when I was younger, um, I, I picked up on uh, I, I love animals, I love wildlife, and okay. so at the time I was heavy into doing uh, drawings of ducks and birds, a lot of birds. I did a lot of bird watching okay. and, um, you know, would take my sketch pad out and sketch what I was seeing. And um, so I did a lot of that. But then it, as I, uh, I got a little bit older in high school, gravitated more towards comic books. And like when Ninja Turtles hit, first hit the scene, the original oh, yeah. comic, that was like, that was it for me. I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Actually, I see that style kind of in a lot of your ink drawings. Now that I think of it, I'm trying. It's one of the things I, I I hope if anyone sees it, they see it as more of a tribute or a um a really just uh, a love letter kind of these guys because I love that indie black and white. 
Oh yeah. Uh, duo tone kind of style and i'm trying to replicate that a little bit some stuff and it's definitely an influence well it, it didn't occur to me until you just mentioned that and then i was picturing the comic and i was like oh yeah like like yeah. It, there there's definitely something like about the way that the the thickness of some of the outlines and the drawings yep. that you do and the edges and yep. even some of the way the details are because they're not the normal details that comic artists would put in not the the usual feathering or whatever mm -hmm. it was more details in um, the outfits or just details on like the extra things that they had on their person or whatever, you know, it's yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. But yeah. That's all in there. I mean, you know, Spider-Man was always a big um, pull for me. And well, I yeah. And that's when the Seth McFarlane or not Seth McFarlane, the Todd McFarlane uh, Spider-Man yeah. was coming out and everybody was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. that that, yeah. that also was over the top too. <laughs> it was. I mean, I think I've had people look at my work and say, damn, what? why is your work so bumpy and squiggly and slimy? <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know. I guess I take that as a compliment. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we liked when that came out that all of us were wanted, we aspired to be that. I mean, that's what I tried to do too. Yeah. Those guys were great. Yeah. Um, and then I realized it took too much time. So then I went back to being just simple Hanna-Barbera looking stuff. <laughs> which is awesome. You know what? The, the thing about it is too, is like a lot of people think that, but when you actually try to do that stuff, mm -hmm. when you actually try to go back and replicate like a, a Tom and Jerry look, or even a Flintstones look, yeah. or a Birdman, or you know, Wacky Racers, or whatever. Yeah. Um, that stuff is it's classic. Like mm -hmm. it's definitely got a classic look to it that is pretty hard to duplicate. Yeah. I mean, it is. You know, I I love it. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah, and it's one of those things where you can try to duplicate it, but there's always just something a little off about it. Like it, there's just some some it, it just never looks perfectly right. Except for I when wondered. you see other people doing homages to it, and it's just like, well, that's because you're a fantastic artist. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. It has occurred to me though at the time, like those guys were working under such weird conditions and uh, time uh, constraints mm -hmm. that you know, half of like, oh yeah, look at that cool off-register look. I was like, well, they didn't mean to do that. <laughs> right. Like, it's just <laughs> kind of the way it turned out because they were pumping this stuff out like crazy. That's a good point. Kidding, you know what I mean? So yeah, but. It works. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Well, and I feel like uh, it, it's funny. This is turning into like a, a classic animation and comic oh, book podcast here. Um, <laughs> but I feel like they, with uh, when you come across online, they'll have like the, the style guides that they do or like the yeah. character guides. I feel like yeah. they put more effort into those than they did. Like the, the scenes would just be like, well, we're just going to trace what they put on here. And there'll be scenes with them. Like, you know, the, in these exact poses that you'll see in the character guides. And then, when then when you go to the actual animation, people's hands are missing, and there's yeah. like you know, there, there's frames dropped, and right, that's <laughs> great. Oh, those character sheets though. We when I was at the Art Institute, we had a couple of teachers that had connections with guys at uh, oh really, Camera and, and filmation and um, uh, uh, oh, what was the uh, Nickelodeon a little bit? What was the outfit that initially did Ren and Stimpy? Um, oh, Spumco. Yeah, Spumco with Spumco mm -hmm. and John Kay, and um, they would give us those sheets, and those sheets were gold. They yeah. were that was really no, they were photocopies of photocopies of photocopies. But still, to get those and see that it was like, oh right. my god, this is the actual like he did this. You know, it's been photocopied ten times, but I don't care. Right. You know, it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, I love those. I love those turn sheets. Yeah, They're great. The, yeah. well, when you, so you were doing that type of stuff in high school. Uh, so what were you yeah. thinking you were going to be once you were doing that? Like with, cause you yeah. know, we all did that work, but then it's like, what am I going to do with this? You're going to, you're going to make a comic book and become a millionaire. So was that, was that the plan? Uh, well, uh, my dad, God bless him. He's a very realistic guy. Uh -huh. And he's one of the guys like, I, you know, I had a comic collection at the time and I come, he's the kind of guy I'd come up to and say, dad, dad, look at this. Uh, Spider-Man number, you know, 163, it's worth, uh, 150 bucks in the comic price guy. Right. And he'd be, well, it's only worth that to somebody who will pay it. You know, I was like, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Uh, but so there was a dose of realism that I got along with that. So I didn't think necessarily I was going to do a comic for my life. I, I kind of was just, I kind of was just doing what I like to do. Yeah. It morphed. It morphed at that time because I was so much into wildlife art, into thinking about fine art more than comic art. After a little while, because I was, I was, I was okay at it. I was pretty good at it, and um, I had these designs of going to the Maryland Institute of Art, and um, 
I looked at their prices even at that time, and they were really, really expensive. And yeah. I'm not even sure if I could get in. At the same time, um, I had this pull because my dad is actually a pastor and has been pretty much his whole life. And um, that was a big part of our life, of course. And yeah. there was a pull for that as well. So I thought to myself, well, look, let me, I'm not sure about this art thing. I really wasn't sure at the time. And I had a lot of people around me telling me, you know, well, that's an artist's life is foolish. You know what I mean? Like, right. you don't want to do that because uh, you'll be poor and starving and, you know, you'll never have a family, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, the same thing a lot of us heard. Um, so I said, well, look, I can go do this Bible college thing, which I think would be good for me um, uh, no matter what I do. And we'll see what happens afterwards. So um, it's kind of, that's what happened. I mean, we went, went there and, you know, of course, great. Uh, had a good time there, learned a lot, met my wife, um, started our family. Uh, but then, you know, eventually decided after that, that that wasn't the direction necessarily for full-time work that I was going. Really? And yeah. Yeah. Just, um, just, uh, yeah, made that decision based on, um, just more self-evaluation, okay. I think. Just sitting with some time with that and just thinking about, like, is this who I am? Is this really what I want to do? Because I had seen it growing up with my dad. Right. I knew it intimately, you know, the ins and outs and how much responsibility and this and that. So I was like, I'm not sure if that's exactly me. You know, I'm not, I don't think that's me. So uh, that was a several month process of just trying. Well, to I would assume it wasn't just you yeah. went outside some one day and was like, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I'm going to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I just went through four years. I don't like that. So no, it wasn't quite like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a process. But it was a good process, and you know, you get to learn more about yourself, and that's always good. Mm -hmm. Um, so then uh, I said, okay, what? Well, I, I had a uh, let's see. At that point, it was um, oh gosh. Well, I got married. I graduated from that college in '95. Got married in '96, and then um. The next got pregnant pretty quick. Uh, uh, brought our <laughs> yeah, and brought brought our first son home on, an, on our first year anniversary. Oh wow! Um, so that was pretty fast. So at that point we were off and running. I have three kids, but um, at that point we were off and running. I just had to get a job to support the family. So I worked at um, Prudential Financial in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I love the face you're making while you're saying it. I still have. It's like you just ate problem. a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I still have horrible, like, PTSD from that place. Yeah. It, it, it was not good. I started there um, in, like, 97 and worked there for, like, eight years or so, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, because the benefits were good and the money was, you know, enough to for the family. And, right. Uh, it was just what I had to do, you know. But at the in the evenings, then, I would go downtown and go to school because I thought, I'm not staying here for sure. And this was <laughs> the nice night school you did? Yeah. And yeah. so, and you were taking 3D animation there. Yeah, it was computer animation at the time, and like. So wh why uh, that? Why that? That's a drastic change. That is not the same as yeah. as drawing comic type stuff. Like that's <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what. Well, what even prompted that? Like, what made you go? Like, I, I think I'll give this right. not only give this a try, but throw some money at it to learn how to do it. Well, I tell you what. Um, <laughs> I know exactly. Uh, which is a whole other story, actually. That's an interesting one as well about the money coming along with that. But um, <laughs> well, that's always an interesting reason, story. Another reason, another reason to hate Prudential. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> another. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Jurassic Park came out mm. in '96. I was going to guess Pixar, but, but Jurassic Park is an even better one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, man, let me tell you something. When that dinosaur breaks through the cage that first time and steps out into the road in between the two trucks and just rah, turns around. I was just like, oh, my goodness. That yeah. is unbelievable. So I think that sparked trying to maybe get into that field. And I thought, okay, at the time, I kind of thought, well, probably wrongly so, that I would be doing a lot more drawing and illustrating and then animating. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of the whole process you know what I mean? Like concept of all the way. To the I, end. I think you were, you were imagining what the process was. It's it, how, yeah, there's right. a lot of it done on computer. There's <laughs> right. 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 So, <laughs> and I think I was incorrect in a lot of that, but yeah. either way I was like animating and com with computers too. I think that would be really cool. 
Um, so yeah, let me. I'm not quite sure exactly what I want to do here. So let me sign up for that. Okay. Um, so I did, and that was really in the as far as college was concerned. That was really in its infancy there. Yeah, Digital. I was going to say even even having like the software at home was mm -hmm. not readily no. available. Like <laughs> the ones no. you could get were like. It, they were not mediocre at best, but they just didn't have the power or neither did the computers uh, no. have the power no. to do what it was. Yeah. I had a pretty run of the mill PC and you know, there's no way I could have run that stuff even if I could have it because right. even with like, you remember journey ed, you, uh, that student discount uh, thing. They had like journey ed, the student discount. No, I don't think I do. And okay. Software and equipment and stuff where I was. And even that it was like, Oh, studio max is not, um, $2,500, it's $1,400. Right. You know? Okay, but no way yeah. <laughs> am I going to be able to afford this. Um, so I now the Art Institute was good in that they did start us on a 2D animation uh, in, in the beginning. They started out with traditional you know, pencil animation. Okay, because like this was also the time that Flash was getting big too. So, yeah, okay. Yes, exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing they were pushing they pushed 2D animation first, and they pushed, you know, going into Flash to kind of, like, ease you into the computer aspects of everything. Yeah. And then we went right to Studio Max, which, um, you know, was very rudimentary at that point, too. Um, so it was my whole introduction to digital art in all of its facets. Like, from, all the way from Corel, Corel Painter was brand new, which I used in uh, one of the first classes I had there. Right. And that was then, actually one of the first programs I got too. It came with the printer right. that I got. It, it, it was oh, like really? the basic version. I had no idea what it was. And I'm like, what's this? And I opened it and I'm like drawing. I didn't know it was a vector program. I was just like, wow, these yeah. lines are so clean. Yeah, no draw. clue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still love Corel Painter. Yeah. I still love it. I still use it. I don't use it as much as I used to because uh -huh. uh, Photoshop has not done a complete job, but they've kind of caught up a little bit, I think, to what painter is is for an organic painting program digital. right it program. was a good one yeah yeah but um so that was it was all great but then you know what honestly Tom I, I the whole time I was there I stuck with it um, because I wanted to finish it but even <laughs> even the animation like the 2d stuff every, you know if you watch a really good cart, uh, animator and Glenn Keane or any of those guys you know Disney they are moving they're moving. Right. It's fluid. It's it's, and I found myself just drawing every single frame, just drawing, drawing, illustrating, drawing, and so I was fighting it the whole time. Yeah. Um, and it, it was frustrating. I kind of knew it was going on, but it was frustrating. But I couldn't really. I didn't want to do any, anything else. I didn't want to be that fluid, you know, half done guy. I wanted to produce these illustrations, and done things. So even my end portfolio, I, I got through it, and it's great. I did. I did well. Um, cause I was a little bit older too, that, which helped, mm -hmm. um, I wanted it a little bit more. Um, and you know, I got through it. It was great, but I, I ended up graduating with a computer animation degree, really wanting to illustrate and draw again, <laughs> like right. I did in high school. So, um, tried to get a job and that's when nine 11 happened and mm. everything dropped out. Like nothing was going on. Um, so I was still working at Prudential, uh, and I, the, the 9-11 happened, and I got laid off from Prudential and got a fairly good severance package from them. Oh, that's helpful. And really, Yeah, which is nice, because really what I decided to do was, like, my portfolio wasn't cutting it. Um, I really had to beef it up. So I spent about six to eight months um, living off that severance pay, beefing mm -hmm. up my portfolio, um, kind of saying, okay, we're, I'm going to do this, and then we're going to move – to where we are now, the location around some family, and I'm just going to try to get a job. So it was kind of scary because we had we an had art job, is what you're saying. You were looking for yes. something in it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And got, my wife, God bless her. Oh, she just said, Yeah, let's do this. You know, and um, so I don't think I could have done it without her support because <laughs> it was it's risky. You know how it is with a family, and you got to do what you got to do. And yeah, you have three little kids, and um, it's just it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of pressure. Right. So sure enough, like it came right down. I think we had just run out, run out of unemployment, just run out of unemployment. And I got an art job in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania at this company called the Bystel Company. The what? Uh, 
the Beistel Company. Okay. Yeah, it's where it's B E I S T L E. So they're a company in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, um, that has been around for well over a hundred years, and they're a party goods and decoration company. So basically, my job there was as an artist to concept from from beginning to end any number of things like uh, Halloween decorations, cutouts, uh, oh. jointed, jointed figures, um, tissue uh, decorations, um, a whole bunch of stuff. Like if you see old timey Halloween decorations, they're, they're classic. It's it's I'm, I'm guaranteed of like half of them are at least but from the bicycle. You got like a whole shelf dedicated. You can't see it uh, here, but I got like a whole shelf dedicated yeah. to that. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah. And this stuff, you know, I was working for a company that had almost originated a lot of that. Halloween decor. Um, so that job was really cool because it was something different all the time. And I was finally back to illustrating and yeah. drawing. You know, so one one week you're doing pink pr- princess dragons, you know, and the next week you're doing Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. And the next week you're doing vampires or werewolves or zombies or something. And- As one does. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I found that to be a great job and people were great. Yeah. I feel like it, the problem is, is while that's a cool thing, I never find party stores sustainable. I, I don't, I know. they're I know. not, you know, and, and I wonder, is that what happened to it or, or what no, happened with that job? They're still going, they're still going strong. Okay, good. Um, they're, you know, they, they do everything there. So the, the whole, the whole factory is there too. So I was able to, what was great about that was I learned a lot about printing too, because oh, I would do yeah. I would do um, all of that. So you're actually seeing everything you did from a sketch go all the way to, and I was sometimes even designing the packaging, like the header cards. and. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, deciding what size the bags were for it. Um, Now, would you guys go through a local printer or did they have like a contract printer? Like, I guess I don't know if this was a chain or what. I'm actually kind of fascinated by this because this is basically you're, you're working in merchandising. It's just not your own merch. Exactly. Right. So, <laughs> so I want to know what you learned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for sure. Um, most of the stuff uh, was printed right there on site, and they had oh no kidding. Own, you know, they had their own people printing everything. Right. So um, that was handy because then you know once you're doing something and they, you get a call and say oh yeah your uh, your uh, Valentine cutouts are on the press right now they want you to go down and do a press check and say oh great okay. So I'd go down and do that, and, and that, I did a lot of uh, the, the big Heidelberg Press uh, stuff and also um, window clings. What do they call that? It's like a, like you know, that plasticky kind of window cling material. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what that press is called off the top of my head. But anyway, it was a whole different uh, flexo, a flexo press. Um, gotcha. For that stuff. So, uh, so a lot of that was like just really – getting in tune with the sales department too. We would go back and forth with the sales department depending on where it was being placed. Um, so they were kind of a distributor. So for instance, like the sales department would go out to Walmart and say, hey, we have this little display that we want to put up in your store. Is that okay? And they would talk it out. And then they'd, the salesman would decide what would go in that display, which then included us. Um, so we would decide you know, how everything looked, of course, up to a point. The packaging then was something that we went back and forth with the sales department with and, you know, which th- this is, that's where it always gets interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when you're being art directed by a salesperson. So <laughs> right. Right. Yes. It's, I think, I think every job where there's an art department has that, has that back and forth. The, the, uh, I will tell you, I'll tell you one quick story about that, which uh, will kind of nutshell that whole area. Um, I remember being in a meeting and some, it wasn't me presenting, thank goodness, presenting an idea, presenting a final concept. And one of the salesmen said, well, I don't like that color. Right. Okay. So I'll tell you how it played out and then I'll back up. <laughs> so why don't, you, so why, don't you, why don't you like that color? I don't know. I just don't like it. So mm-hmm. that was kind of a comment, but then I will back up now and tell you that salesman was colorblind. Um, so oh, okay. that's interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting comment to make when you're colorblind that you don't like the color. But it is an interesting point too, in the sense that that means that you don't think of, of colorblindness and it's like, well, that definitely is something like some of your actual customers aren't going to see this color properly. Right. Right. Now, if we were marketing 
with that in mind, I would have said, yes, you're right, Tom, but this was not the case. <laughs> right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so, um, there was, there's always, as artists, you know, I think every artist who works in a production environment probably has at least one art director story that's crazy, and I have a lot. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, you work through it, and you have to work with other people, and it's a great experience, and it toughens you up. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you're able to, I think, you know, it makes it better sometimes. Yeah, yeah sometimes I had drawers full of stuff like, I think this is better, and I kept that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just happened. So, oh, of course. Uh, but I worked there for about 10 years. Uh, so that was, a, that was a good Oh, that's run. a good run, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a good run. But the, the, the problem the entire time was not necessarily the people or the work. I love the work. Mm -hmm. um, I had a really long commute. It was like, oh, a, that sucks. Yeah, it was an hour and a half each way. Um, so wow. Yeah. So <laughs> doing way. that for ten doing that for ten years was really hard. You lasted uh, longer than I would have, man. Uh, I'm, you know, again, it was the whole family thing. Had a job, but we had connections to the area that we were in. We didn't want to move closer to my work necessarily, and mm -hmm. so I said, "Well, I'll take the hit," and I um, and I did that. Um, so that ended up being really, uh, things were kind of drying up. Uh, things were shifting at the company as far as our responsibilities, and it was becoming less of a, an illustrator, artist environment, more of a um, salesy kind of a bent to things. Um, they were getting more involved with things, so I just didn't. Eh. I was like, yeah. Another reason to. That's so the tough you, thing. You know, the the salespeople, they're the ones who actually do sell it. I know. They do. <laughs> you can, they do. You can make stuff all day. It doesn't mean anybody's going to buy it. <laughs> I know, exactly. And you, know, you, can't fault, you can't fault them for caring about what goes out there in the marketplace right. and wanting to have a good face on things. Of course. Of course. You know? Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so left there um, and worked at York Wall Coverings here, which... This is a blip on the radar. Like really wallpaper? Is, is that what wall coverings yeah. are? Okay. Wallpaper, um, like, uh, you know, like fatheads, uh, those big wall decals that you can Oh, put up, oh, wall cover. Okay. They did, kind of stuff. they did that kind of stuff too. No, they, they, they were a premier wallpaper company. Okay. In the world. But they did do like the large decals. Like if yeah. you had like, yeah. you know, Jim's bait shop or something like that, you would yeah, be able yeah. to put that on the wall. Okay. Right. So I like how I just came how, up with a bait shop of my own creation just then. And it's Jim's. Yeah. It's Jim's bait shop. <laughs> yep, that's right. Well, he's I'll a good guy. That. Right. <laughs> Jim, he's, he's awesome. Uh, great friend. Um, <laughs> so I decided to, I had to go there just because I needed to get away from the previous company and went there, was a uh, graphic art director there for them, um, was able to do some art. Long story short, that didn't work out. Mm. Um, and it was a really kind of a toxic environment there. Uh, that's um, too bad. Yeah. So anyway, um, always had uh, a desire this whole time to work at where I work now. And, um, which I do want to ask about because yeah. so yeah. you went to school. So first of all, you went to school for 3d art and so far, none of this has involved 3d art. Correct. And now I know the place that you work now because I've looked you up before this interview, obviously, and yeah. I don't understand how it's 3D art, but I know that it is. I've never understood this facet of 3D yeah. art. So what you do now is. Yes, I work for a place called Sight and Sound Theaters in uh, Lancaster, PA, and I'm a 3D artist for them. I did start out as graphic design, but then moved over to 3D art. But you're yeah. a 3D stage artist, right? Yes. So. <laughs> Basically the whole yeah, basically the whole process with them it's it's really cool. Um, any set piece or any even from the a hand prop all the way up to a large floor set piece, you know, two three stories tall, mm -hmm. um, starts out with the concept, then moves from concept to full realization and illustration. Um, and sometimes those illustrations can happen in ZBrush or in Modo, like in 3D, mm -hmm. um, and then. They're taken from 3D, and we do, for a smaller application, we'll do 3D printing. Um, so, for instance, if, uh, the things I work on, like if there's an axe or something that has a specific, you know, look to it. Yeah. Um, these certain things. So, we model that in 3D and print that 3D. Really? Then, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then oh, wow. either print a whole bunch of them, like lamps, you know, that maybe, and then our engineering department will put like lights in it and stuff. Um, but then the bigger things are done, um, they carve them out of foam, you know, like these huge pieces of foam. And there's like a die cutter that cuts them out of foam and they'll coat them and they'll paint them. And yeah, our you've, set you've done like ships and like uh, yeah. big, like, yeah. uh, what, what would they be like? stone towers and things oh, like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It's a 300, it's a 300 foot wraparound stage, which has two, like the side stage, side stage left and stage right. And also, um, a 120 foot stage. It's like, Oh gosh, 75, 80 feet high. Um, we have like the largest flying led screen in the world. Yeah. Um, no, I, I looked at the virtual, uh, on their website, you can do like yeah. kind of a virtual look around. It, it's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like 2,000 people can fit in that theater, too. So it's, it's you know, there's millions. And, and there's also a theater in Branson. They have a theater in Branson, Missouri okay. as well. Um, but, you know, so, so, you know, we get a lot of, I mean, there's millions of people that come in and out of there every year. So yeah. it's pretty cool because it's a lot of visibility. But it's really cool because then, again, um, this place is doing a lot of the things there on site. They're building things on site there. Yeah. engineering and building and concepting things on site. So I get to, you know, I'll, I'll do some kind of cart that has a trap door in it or something like that. And I get to actually see the guys in the paint shop painting it. And mm -hmm. It actually comes to life right there. And then, then you get to see somebody running around on stage with it or whatever. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. You've lucked pretty. out in getting to see the process of how these things are made. Like you had the place with oh, the yeah. printing shop built in. So you got to see yeah. what the actual, like when you're creating it, you know, mm -hmm. like this is what they need to do this. And you get yeah. to see them and like, oh, that's why that doesn't work. Like I've done that where they go, but they need this. And I'm like, why? I don't understand. And they'll be like, cause they just do. And it's like, well, I want to know though. And it's right. like, I mean, I'll give it to you cause clearly they need it, but I want to know yeah. why, what am I missing? Um, yeah. The other thing too is you went from going to school thinking uh, I'm going to draw hand draw stuff and then move over to 3d and then make it and then, you know, uh, dinosaurs. And right. then that wasn't the reality when you went to school and now you have a job where literally you draw things, then do them in 3d. And then all of a sudden they're giant things. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you actually created what the concept you thought was when you I first know. started in school. That's fantastic. It is. And I, I really feel that my job now is like a, just a synergy of, of so many things that I've done in my life Yeah, over my just pre artistic career and during my artistic career. And, um, even with my, uh, Bible degree that I have, uh, cause sight and sound theaters is a, a, a large theater that brings, uh, different Bible stories to life Yeah, um, on stage. So I have this connection now where my art, um, you know, uh, experience, is now meeting this Bible degree experience that I have too. And they're kind of meshed together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, it's really cool that, that I can have that kind of connection, um, you know, professionally and like personally, you know, yeah. with that. And um, so that's really, it's really awesome. I, I, I agree. The creative process to me is something that you mentioned, uh, it's getting to see those things yeah. and getting to understand um, when somebody says, like you said, Hey, I, I need this different. And like, why? And then I have people like, I walk over to the engineer and he says, well, you know, there's a handle that needs to be yes. here for somebody to get out. And this flips open here and we have a control panel that needs to go there. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I totally yeah. get that. You know what I mean? Like it's a real team, a super team effort. And I think that's the, going back to like when you work at a corporation and there's the sales team and the, the, I used to be the liaison between both because here in Madison, okay. like I, I did front end. Basically I was the guy that made the websites look pretty and, mm. but it wasn't really me. It was the graphic designers, but they didn't know how to make websites. They just knew like, I've seen a website and this is what it looks like. And I'd go, okay, here's the functionality. And I'd explain it to them. And then yeah. they'd go and the back end people would be like, well, and when we do the website, it has to be this, it, this is where the fun, this is where the process of what needs to be calculated goes in or the mm -hmm. analytics are going to show up here, or it needs to function this way. And I'd go, okay. So I'd show them the design and go, where do you want that to be? How does it work? How does it? So I was the person that had to connect those. And that was, they, both sides that I talked to dislike, <laughs> they just automatically disliked each other. They're like, the designers are going to do whatever they want. And I'm like, well, talk to them. And they're like, no, I, I'm just going to make it because it, it works. 
you know, and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'd like to say I'm generalizing, but 90% yeah. of the time I'm not, it was just no, like, no, I'm true. not going to talk to them. I have a job to do. I'm going to do that. I don't care what they're doing. And it's like, well, that's where the problem is. And it creates a hostile environment. So I used to go in between and kind of, slide in, you know, kind of do like the, Hey, um, anyway, hi. So this is what they said. And I'm like, I totally get it. But it really was like, I was in by the the ending, we'd have conversations where we all could talk about it together. And that was great. And that goes with like the sales and everything. And I think that's the thing that misses that's missing. Like you were saying is if the salespeople could go this is what I know will work and why. And this, uh, it's like that scene. Do you watch the office? I'm going all over yeah. the place here, but okay. Yeah, yeah. That scene where they take the new branch that they absorbed from um, yeah. wherever uh, 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 I forget, but with like when Rashida Jones goes on a sales call yeah. with, uh, with uh, the woman whose name I forget all of a sudden, oh, but the, yeah, but the, uh, the, it, is it Dolores? Phyllis. Phyllis, Phyllis. Um, oh, and the hair. And they get, yeah, they get the big hairdos yeah. and she's like, what's up? And it's, and then they get in there and she looks at her and she's like, see, cause like his entire family has that hairdo. And, and it's it. like, you know, it's just, this is what you need to do to relate to someone because you want the same thing, but sometimes yeah. you just need to have, uh, you know, kind of a leveling uh, to, yeah. to be on the same page. The communication that you need to have in these instances is really key. And then, you know, with the communication too, it sets up the need for trust. Yeah. You know, and just using your illustration with uh, those two in the car and getting, she had to trust Phyllis and say, okay, well, I'm going to ha- go ahead and get this. I-, I don't know what's going on. Right. I'm going to get the do. And it worked out because she trusted her. And, you know, it's a funny scene. It's hilarious. It is, it is a very funny scene. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, <laughs> that hairdo does not look good on her. But, <laughs> but, but even so, um, yeah, like when you were working with people, you you have to have that relationship. You have to have that communication and that trust. But when you do have that, it's a special thing, and it allows you to then uh, accomplish more creatively than I think if you didn't have that. Instead of having all these islands working against each other, you know, out in the sea, just lost mm-hmm. and not communicating, not not seeing each other at all. You're 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 coming together and you know, kind of building one country that each has its different part almost like states, you know, or whatever, but that come together and actually form something more special. Yeah. You know, you know bigger, you know, than even any one part. And it can never be achieved in a meeting because that just always seems so confrontational. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's, let's all have a meeting. And it's like, no, that's, that, that's like jumping right in. That's, that, that's right away. Like going, get in this room. We got to talk. Yeah. You know? But <laughs> half the time, half the time when I'm doing things, I'm going right up to the shop. Yeah. And I've always been a walk over to a person's desk type yeah. of person. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I go right to the guy and say, Hey, is this working for you? Is this okay? Do I need to do something different? And he's like, no, it's working great. Or, well, we could use a little tweak here, make this a little bigger. Like, sure. Sure. I'll do it right away. You know, yeah. and bring it right back up to him. And that's a great, that's a great uh, dynamic. Like it's a really cool dynamic to have that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm lucky to have it. Like, I love yeah. that I still talk about it too. Like I'm still doing it. Like I completely left the corporate life and it, I'm still talking about, it. it's so funny how it just, it sticks with oh. you. You know, I'm talking oh, about, have, they, they have claws. Yeah. They, they, they stay with you, man. Yeah. It's been like <laughs> almost, uh, it's been over a year now and I still talk about it. Like I'm going to be like, I'm going back tomorrow on Monday. Oh man. Uh, no, no, no. I get it. I yeah. totally get it. <laughs> um, yeah. here's a, on a side note too, this is what I, I wanted to ask this before too, just because personally, and I don't necessarily use 3d modeling software for 3d animation, yeah. but some of them have been really lending themselves to 2d animation. And I kind of want to branch out into learning different programs to do it. Don't know if it's the right Avenue to do it, but grease pencil, which is what blender yeah. has been using for 2d animation recently. They've, they've really built it out and it's great. Except, yeah. you know, it crashes on me all the time, but that's just Blender. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the question I have, and it never occurred to me until I started doing it. I don't even know how to form this question. All I know is I see people <laughs> drawing 3D models. Like, here's a here's a drawing of a guy, and when you turn him around, you can see yeah. his back, and you can set the lighting and have it go like that, and they'll go, yeah. that's this, and, that's, and now yeah. I have my character. And it's like, okay, you built a character. How do you use yeah. it? You just built it in an isolated environment. So, like, what's the right. process there? What am I missing? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> no, it is, it gets very layered. And also I will say too, it's very individual for whatever, like if you're working at a gaming company um, or a theater like I do, uh-huh. using, using it as we do, um, 
there are some similarities, of course. Um, I could speak. I, I did. I did a little stint for a couple gaming companies here and there, not a lot. Um, so I know a little bit about it, but I'll speak more to I guess how we use it or how I've seen it applied. Yeah. Um, so basically, so you know, you're you're seeing we 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 utilize things individually. So, for instance, if uh, we have need for a large uh, castle fortress like set piece. Okay, well, we have a program actually that was designed by one of our um, one of our art directors called uh, Portal that actually allows us to visualize um, these things in real time and in, in real space. And so we'll bring in this prop, we'll bring in this set piece, we'll bring in this, and you can actually sit in the seats in the theater and sit oh. anywhere you want in the theater and look how it's affected. It has lighting, it has effects you can add to it and stuff like that. So um, we're utilizing things, bringing them in that way um, by seeing how it will physically look when somebody's actually sitting in a seat in the theater, you know, how it works out. Mm -hmm. um, when we're utilizing, so um, let me like paint a scenario. Maybe this is more your question. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, well, I don't so, know if I described it right either, too. Yeah. So uh, explain yeah, it how you can explain it. <laughs> I know people have different ways of explaining it, too. So yeah, I yeah. I, somebody out there after I do this is going to be like, that's not right at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So, but if we had, like, if I, if I had to design some kind of a set piece that was a fortress and someone had done something already, um, like pieces, uh, like say they had a wall I really liked. You know, you can cut things apart to the point where you can take that wall and bring it into yours and actually integrate it into your scene and just explode that idea. And you could do that ad nauseum. I like mean, just, you know, instantly. I think that's what I'm asking. How do you do that? Like, OK, yes, you. I guess that's what I'm saying is you create it. But then it's like, all right, now I'm creating this scene and I want that character or that background piece yeah. to be in there and I want to reuse it. How do you like there's no import, is there? Like, can you just import or is it a library feature or is it like? Yeah, I, I mean, as far as that's as far as that goes, you're just only limited by. Well, OK, if you're going to get into animation, that's uh -huh. different. Okay. You have to um, add bones and like a skeletal structure to right. Your, and even I—that's why I'm saying I do it 2D, so I wouldn't go that far. Right. So okay, yeah. Right. 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 So other than that, I think you're only limited by um, compatibility between, say, for instance, um, when I am um, creating—I'll use this axe uh, illustration again because it's just benign, and I won't get in trouble for saying anything. Else. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> so so um, I'm building this axe, and what I would do in Modo. Uh, which is a a great 3D program. Oh, really? But it's it's more of a straight 3D program. Like it's like Blender. It does doesn't do as much texture wise as Blender and things like that. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't think it uses a node based kind of system like I know Blender and Substance Painter and all those kind of things use. But yeah. Um, which I would love to get into. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so I'll just do it in primitives. You know, uh, an axe is just that kind of triangular head, it's a box, you know, connected to it, uh, uh -huh. create those things, maybe smooth it out a little bit, make some connections. Then I can export that to ZBrush, which is a 3D uh, modeling, um, more organic clay almost like yeah. uh, 3D program. So then I'll do all my details and I'll put on striations and chips and cracks and blemishes and things like that. Then uh, you can export that back to Modo again uh, because then you can refine it, or reduce the polygon counts, and bring it the file size down um, to make it, uh, you know, more more uh, accessible by other people. And then that program, we will then send it out. Let's. Or what are we going to do? Are we going to 3D print this? Are we going to, um, you know, do something bigger, like cut it out of foam, and then for some reason I can't remember what that's called. That that machine is called. What that do? <laughs> well, maybe it'll come to me. Foam um, machine. Foam cutting machine. Yeah, <laughs> my friends are going to be like, oh, damn, you stupid. <laughs> so um, are we going to do that? You know, yeah. Or are we going to just physically um, do turnaround prints of this and let the model, let the, the guy in the shop actually physically make this, which we've done as well. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's actually, if I have this shield with all this stuff on it and, and I've done it in 3D, it's great for visualization, but it may not be great for actual execution. Mm. So, um, and that happened, like a shield will come out and the, the guy up in the shop, he actually 
created the shield. He wood blocks with clay, this and that, and just cut it all out, and then made a mold of it. And then now we have we need fifty of those. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's so I think it's just really deals with compatibility. Yeah, uh, and what your goal end goal is. You know, it, it does sound like too that you you've been talking about importing and exporting at different places. I think I just need to figure out. I I think it. I'm just not realizing how to import and export things that I create. Like if I do a drawing and then later on I went, I, I don't want to have to redraw that person. And right. you know, and right. I'm like, do I bring in a drawing and retrace it each time? But it's, it sounds like, it just sounds like I'm not understanding it, the, how to import and export in uh, in 3d software yet or well, using it as a library, I guess. So the way that I used to do it was I would create these characters in flash. Like mostly yeah. what I've always done is 2d in flash. And I would yeah. create the library of the different parts so I could have reusable things so I wouldn't have to redraw the things. And then I could draw my own yeah. in-betweens or you know move them and create in-betweens. Yeah. But yeah. I'd have a library where I'd just drag the pieces that I need mm-hmm. or bring them on there. And then mm-hmm. when I went to go to Blender, I drew the character and I'm like, so how do I do this? And, and that was, and then, and then I was just like, and if I make a new one, how am I going to import the one that I drew here? Right. And then right. I fig, I, so I figured out how to use the, use the parts, but as I'm getting through, I'm working on a cartoon right now. Oh, and great. as I'm getting through it, I'm like, if I make a new one, how am I going to get this? Like, how am I going to get these? I don't know how to export it or get the yeah, character yeah. that I created. And that's what I, that's what I'm realizing is I'm, I'm future proofing myself going, if I do this, like right now it works fine. But later on, if I make a new cartoon, it's right. like, what am I going to have to do? Open this and then save it as a new one, then delete all the right. files and hopefully keep the character. Like, right. that's right. the part that I'm missing. Um, so anyway, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, I think the, um, the, you know, because I'm, I'm familiar with what you're saying, you know, just having that library of, of um, not standards, but, you know, just arms and through. legs and yeah. heads and, and yeah. Mouth shapes and eyes. And right. All that kind of stuff. Um, I think that the method is probably sound. Mm-hmm. It's just how to work it in that particular program. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's what I'm saying. Um, I think I'm just missing. I think like the language for the different programs yeah, is different. Yeah. And I just don't know where the thing I'm trying to do is. Yeah. I wish I could help you. I don't know blender at all. That, that's all right. That's you actually, <laughs> but I think you did. I mean, you led me in the right direction already with the importing and exporting. I'm like, okay, so it does have the ability to go, you've created this thing and you can even import it and export it to different yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's there. So it's, I know I'm in the right direction then at least yeah, and yeah, from yeah. talking with you, it's like, yeah, of course it's there. Why wouldn't it be? That's silly. <laughs> well, you never know. Yeah. I mean, really, it's like, I mean, the way things are now, it's just, oh my gosh. I, I want to get, like I said, I want to get into like substance painter, substance designer, but it uses this whole new node based system to apply right. texture and apply. And that's like, I kind of understand it, but it's like, uh, it might, and sometimes it might as well be like quantum physics to me. Cause I'm like, it, it well, probably is a little bit with the amount of math that goes into doing these 3d <laughs> software. It's, you don't know. It's, and then, and then I get frustrated and I pull out my pencil and I'm just like, I just want paper and pencil. Ah, right. right. <laughs> you know, and oh, man. <laughs> well, and, and speaking of that, and maybe, yeah. maybe this is a good segue. I don't know, but, uh, but you've been teasing, good? you've been teasing that you're uh, going to be doing a web comic recently. Now, is this going to be, first of all, this is how I'm making it a segue. Um, is it going to be a uh, pencil and paper or is it going to be digitally based? Like, tell me about this new comic book se- or yeah. web comic that you're doing. It's an idea I've had for quite a while. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be, I'm doing all of the sketching, doing all of the composite, uh, not composite, like storyboarding, sketching, and things like that. Traditional pen, uh, pencil and paper. Oh, okay. But just for uh, speed sake and for editability, um, I am going to be inking and coloring it digitally. Okay. Now, I've been kind of going back and forth with a lot of stuff I've been doing. Like a lot of the, the stuff we were talking about in the beginning, like the... Uh, the indie comic kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, those kind of characters and things like that. I will actually pencil those and then ink those by hand, scan the inks in and then do a little bit of toning digitally. You right. Know? Actually getting that duo tone, that cross hatch and all that kind of stuff, the way they did it, they, that stuff, you can't find it anymore. Right. Um, no, I, mean, I talked to a com- I talked to a comic book artist recently who has that stuff and like hoards it and only uses it on special occasions. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, Fortunately, there's some companies out there that do some of those uh, textures really nicely. And um, so 
that's why I've been doing those. But this, I was like, you know what? This is going to be something I want to do more regularly, and I might want to do exactly what you said. Maybe I'll draw like some turnarounds. Maybe I'll do that for some of the characters and mm -hmm. u utilizing those again. So that's definitely something digital I want to be able to do. Um, so yeah, so it's it's my friend. Did you ever hear about the games? Uh, we used to play a lot of like uh, multi online multiplayer games, mm -hmm. like EverQuest, and um, we played a lot of City of Heroes and City of Villains. Do you remember those games? I I remember them. I never played them, but I know what you're talking yeah. about. So you can create your own character and fight crime and you know they had a lot of fun we would yeah. do it all the time um and but we made up um so tom you're gonna getting uh, <laughs> i say this tongue-in-cheek okay okay you're getting the exclusive because i haven't told anybody i know that. you haven't you've only teased it and i was curious <laughs> to see how far you would go with it so right. keep it's going coming out in august it's gonna be after it's out anyway so okay, okay. <laughs> that's good um so we had this character we made up um we said look we want to stand out in this game just to, and we're just having fun. So we're like, what's the dumbest thing we could do? What's a dumb what's a dumb character we could do? Yeah. And we came up with this character called the Almighty Sandwich. <laughs> nice. So he was a dumb kind of uh, you know uh, narcissistic unaware of his self kind of hero. And he had a um a sidekick and his sidekick was this girl who was younger, it's just tiny compared to him. And she was sadistic, like uh, just you know, crazy. Okay. And her name was uh, Soup Du Jour. So, <laughs> so it was Almighty Sandwich and Soup Du Jour. Okay. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We had tons of fun. We had this whole lore we created, and just would laugh and laugh about it, and just made up stupid names and stuff. So basically, I was just sitting around. I was like, you know, what would I do if I just wanted to have fun and everything? And that was the first thing I thought of, because I had so much fun with my friend um, creating this character. So that is. The web comic I'm going to be doing. It's called The Almighty Sandwich and His Deli Defenders, <laughs> and he's basically, basically a hero that's like trying to defend, um, in a really bad way. <laughs> it sounds really stupid when I say it out loud. I, but... <laughs> I, 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 thought, I think that's the intention. I'm so, no, yeah. this it's, sounds it's, intellectual. This sandwich yeah. hero that you're talking about. <laughs> he's very deep, and um, <laughs> no, he's his basic. He's fumbling trying to. Uh, defend the city's nutrition and um, their well-being, but he does it in the worst of ways. Soup du jour keeps him in check. She's kind of the reality check. And, you know, he definitely is going to have an arch nemesis. He definitely has a super group that he's a part of, okay. a la kind of the Justice League kind of thing. Right. Um, and, of course, there's going to be a super villain group as well. Um, but it's really, a lot of it's just an outlet for me to draw yeah. one thing. It's a lot of drawing. It's a lot of work. And also just these silly things that I and my friends talk about, think about just to get them out. And yeah. Just to have fun. I mean, really, it is just to have fun. What's the yeah. release cycle that you plan on doing for it? I'd hope to, uh, it's coming out August the 2nd, should be the first strip. And it's just going to be on Instagram. Okay. Um, it's just a, like a swipeable comic on Instagram uh, through my account there. And I hope to do it every two weeks. Okay. So I'm working because I'd like to do keep doing my other stuff as well. So having that off week too, I think will give me some time to actually produce some more. But I'm trying to work ahead right now, trying to, you know, get ahead of the game several strips at least. Yeah. And so I can give myself a bit of a buffer because you know how that goes. Yeah. No, because I do mine every, I do mine the day that I put them out, which is sometimes it's like, oh, that's right. I haven't done the comic know, yet. I've yeah. <laughs> appreciated it lately because you've had, you've had several lately to deal with like just real life, like fixing things and breaking things. And I'm just that's like, cause it's really yeah. like, it, that means I, not, that's what happened to me today, but it's yeah. true that yeah, it has been breaking stuff. And then of course I've got the weird blood vessel thing that's happening in my eye today, which I'm trying to angle to make sure it doesn't show up on video uh, too I much. Can't see it. I can't see it. So that's good. You're <laughs> good. <enough>. <laughs> but, uh, but the, uh, are you planning to put it on um, uh, webtoons or, or tapas at all too? Like the web comic sites? I haven't thought actually any more than I've just told you. Really. Oh, okay. Well, you should try putting them on tapas or web comics or web we That's definitely <laughs> something I could I could uh, take a take a cue from with you. I mean, um, yeah, I'm just uh, it's a new area for me. It's a yeah. I, I saw a couple guys doing it. Like Matt Armstrong was one guy that was doing it online on on Instagram. A couple other people on Instagram just 
but you know, like yourself, have that kind of swipeable, quick shot kind of thing. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do a comic, but you know, doing a full blown comic is that's years of, of right. work, like a graphic novel kind of thing, um, which I had ideas about, but I wanted to have some kind of a outlet or more quick turnaround just to kind of dive in. Right. You know, and um, this seemed perfect. It seemed perfect for that kind of thing. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I'm excited about it. I think what I have so far, I, I, I bounce it off my friends at work and stuff, and they seem to think it's okay. So, you know, I, you're always your own worst critic. I mean, you know. Right. But um, they seem to think it's funny and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope, I, you know, I, again, it's really, it's, it's too bad to say but it's more, mostly cathartic. It's really just really just for me. <laughs> right. Of course. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. That's another thing that I, I've realized recently, too. It's like I'll make stuff and I'll be like, oh, this is so awesome. And it's like, for who? It's for I think it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. When I'm drawing like a, you know, Wolverine with a gun and he's got a space helmet on or something, I'm like, who's going to? Who's gonna buy this? I like <laughs> that drawing that you have, though. Like, it, it, or <laughs> when you said space helmet, there's a new one you did recently. It's like you even made it your your icon uh, on oh, Facebook. The, the skull, the yeah, skull. yeah, the skull and the space helmet and all that. I really right. like that one. You did that in watercolor too, didn't you? No, no, actually, oh, that's that not was, the watercolor one. Okay. No, no. Um, well, I have a sketchbook that I keep a, a Moleskine sketchbook. And that may be one. Yeah, you know, I might be forgetting. You might be actually right. But yeah, that that I try to stick traditional and just do uh, ink drawings with watercolor wash. You know, yeah. I used to do a lot of that when I was younger, and just love that. Like, just love the spontaneity of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the way you can. It's so tactile. It's so cool to have like a sketchbook of that too. I feel it just keeps your uh, keeps your chops up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Keeps yeah. Your chops up. And you and yeah. you've been posting a lot of those those sketchbooks on your accounts too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just I feel like well, you know, if I'm doing the work, I might as well post them. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's it. I I feel like I forget to do that all the time. So seeing when I see people do that stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to remember to do that, and then I'll see it again later and go, oh yeah, I got to remember to do that. <laughs> right. so but it's no i love it when i see uh you flipping through those those tiny sketchbooks you have especially those are really cool yeah, yeah that is like yeah i have it you know i keep it right here right next to my computer and it's just that's a real stream of consciousness thing it's yeah. really you know i just have a random image pop in my head and i just put it down real fast and again it's just a way to i think it's really important um one of the things i didn't do when i was younger I don't think it was have, you know, a way to just keep that up. Right. I think it's really important. Even, no matter what you do, just do something every day, even mm -hmm. if it's five, ten minutes. You know, just get some idea out or write something down or do a quick sketch or something like Because as an artist, I think it's really important that, that you do that. Yeah. You know I mean, you exercise that muscle, you know. I agree. I think it's important, yeah. Yeah. And so where could people go to see your stuff? Like where, where would you suggest people go? Yeah, I mean, mostly I, I I think I'm hinging everything off my Instagram account, which okay. is Dan Hardesty Art um, at Dan Hardesty Art, and I'm on Facebook as well under that name as well. You can find me there too. Um, I don't really. My website is eh, it's okay. I think with the sandwich stuff, I might try to post stuff a little more regular on my website. You know, um, I don't know how much action I get there at all. Not really, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 so I, confident. I feel, I feel, uh, I barely check it. It's like, I don't know what Right. It, and that's, um, that's the thing is it's one of those where, yeah, you got to be into it to do it. You can't just go, I, 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 I got it. Right. Yeah. No, I get, I get I what you're saying. I haven't committed, <laughs> you know, I, I fully realize that. You'll get I, there. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, probably Instagram account would be, would be the best place to catch up with me. Great. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. It was great meeting you. Yeah. It really is good to see your face. Talk with you. Enjoy your podcast.